The Narangan Set Runestone Back in December of 1984, a man who had been hunting for quahog claims in the Pojak Point region of the Narangan Set Bay noticed a large stone slab that had strange markings that had been scratched into its surface. After spending a considerable time attempting to pull the stone from the region but being completely unsuccessful as the stone weighed more than 2.5 tonnes, the Quahogger quickly reported the slab to the Rhode Island Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission shortly after. This led to a short expedition by the Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission that located the stone during the brief period in which it was visible within low tide, and found that it had originated from upland and most likely was down in the bay after extreme events of erosion. The stone, however, was not removed from the bay during this time, and would later be at the centre of an interesting heist during 2012 when the stone disappeared from the waters after having been stolen, forcing the State Attorney General's Environmental Unit and DEM's Criminal Investigation Unit to spend more than a year before finally recovering the stone from the stone thief. It would be at this time of recovery that a strange character, known as Everett Brown, would come forward claiming that the runestone belonged to him as he and his brother claimed to have carved the runes into the rock back in 1964. When officials questioned why the man had not stepped forward after its initial discovery, he dismissed such questions on the grounds that they had merely forgotten and only recently remembered. Interestingly enough, there's a substantial amount of evidence that the stone predated the supposed carvings of 1964 and that the runes are legitimate in nature. However, given the conditions of erosion and lack of further evidence to date, further information and the theory surrounding the Narangan set runestone is limited and remains a mystery to this day as to its true origins. The Impenetrable Sacsayhuaman Walls Located at the northern outskirts of the city of Cusco, Peru, is an ancient Inca city with walls so impenetrable, built atop difficult to maneuver mountainous regions, that archaeologists have often had trouble trying to explain the creation of the city and the ancient building methods used for its creation. The site has often been referred to as an example of Cyclopean masonry named after the ancient Greek mythology involving the Cyclops race that supposedly built massive and impenetrable structures by hand without the use of mortar of any kind. The Sacsayhuaman Wall appears to have been built in the same way, utilizing massive stones, each of which weighing more than 128 metric tons, with the largest stone weighing more than 200 metric tons, without the use of mortar of any kind. When the site was first visited by the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro, he described the location as the following. On top of a hill, the Inca had a very strong fort surrounding with masonry walls, of stones and having two very high towers, and in the lower part of this wall there were stones so large and thick that it seemed impossible that human hands could have set them in place. The stones were so close together and so well fitted that the point of a pin could not have been inserted in one of the joints. Additional text described that the compound was occupied with a number of rooms that were filled with arms, lances, arrows, darts, clubs, bucklers and large oblong shields, which led many to believe that the site was still being occupied by a number of natives throughout the region. Oddly enough, archaeological evidence today shows that the site had not been lived in since roughly 900 CE and that the remains of pottery and other goods were far older than anyone had previously realised. Depictions of Ancient Egyptian Giants Back in 1901, archaeologists discovered the remains of the ancient Egyptian king Sarnacht, of whom was the ruling pharaoh during the Third Dynasty of Egypt and was often regarded in ancient Egyptian depictions as being one of the single most powerful Egyptian pharaohs to have ever walked the earth. It was this power that often saw King Sanakt, depicted roughly seven times larger than others when portrayed on ancient hieroglyphs. Archaeologists had often believed that the more powerful a king's influence was, the larger he was depicted, and so often argued that the size of his hieroglyphs were not indicative of his actual height and was more a representation of his power. It was not until his remains were discovered that the theory was put into question, however, 
as the skeletal structure and size of the ancient king showed Egyptologists that the ancient king Sanakt was actually a victim of gigantism. Gigantism in the scientific world refers to a special condition in which an individual experiences excessive growth hormone during their childhood, usually caused by an adenoma, known as a tumor on the pituitary gland. In the modern day, this has led to individuals ranging in height from 7 feet to an incredible 9 feet tall, with the largest recorded height only recently made in 1940. Another interesting fact to look at is the depiction of the builders of the pyramids in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. It is a common fact known amongst Egyptologists that the ruling class of ancient Egypt was often depicted as two to three times the size of the average population. This is believed to be due to the importance of the figure, and so it was a requirement to depict the ruling class in such a manner. However, it could be that these depictions were far more accurate than previously known, and the ruling class of Egypt could have been an advanced race of giants. Back in 820 AD, the Sultan El Rashid al Mamun dedicated to open the Great Pyramid upon which he was told that the structure had been built by giants, who were referred to as the Shedai, which roughly translated to superhuman beings, and that within these pyramids they had stored a great treasure beyond the knowledge of man. Given these strange discoveries of gigantism that researchers are only now beginning to understand in the modern day, there are many wondering if the ancient depictions of giants from the past could have been true depictions of creatures often seen as strange and possessing power that may not have been entirely human. The Newport Tower, Rhode Island Found in the Toro Park, located in Newport, Rhode Island, there stands the remains of an old stone windmill that was once used as a major ammunition storage depot during the American Revolutionary War and stands as a symbol in the modern day of American independence. Although many might dismiss it as another historical site of American history, the tower itself has been at the center of intense debate relative to the reveal that its construction is believed to have predated the European colonization of the area and have been built by pre-Columbian transoceanic contactees. Back in the year 1837, a Danish archaeologist by the name of Carl Christian Raffen believed that the Newport Tower actually predated any of the European colonies that were established in the area, and that it was evidence that previously believed Nordic expeditions that may have passed through the area had built the tower not to serve as a windmill but as an old Nordic church. Additionally, an archaeologist by the name of Philip Ainsworth Means hypothesized that the structure had been built between the 11th and 14th century given its construction style and that the existence of fireplaces throughout the tower showed evidence that the original purpose of the construction could not have been used for a windmill as the flower would have been too flammable for the existence of fireplaces throughout its construction. Unfortunately, there's no evidence of the structure having been used as a church or a windmill and the Nordic origins of the tower are still under debate as no concrete evidence for either theory has been established. The Westford Knight Back in 1873, in a printed edition of the Gazetta of Massachusetts, was a lone article detailing a strange carved rock that, at the time of the article, was believed to have been made by a local Native American tribe as the impressions of the rock predated any known post-Columbian transatlantic contact people. It was not until 1954 when the president of the Archaeological Society of Connecticut, a man by the name of Frank Glynn, visited the carved rock and began to notice additional impressions and indentations in the rock that seemed to match a sword and shield of European origin. After discussing this finding with a man by the name of T.C. Lethbridge, surrounding a theory of Nordic people having once possibly ventured through the region, the two archaeological experts believed that the carvings in the rock were evidence of such Nordic expeditions. Interestingly enough, however, Lethbridge would then visit the carvings and claim that the figure more accurately resembled a medieval knight from the 14th century, and that the sword carving on the rock was not that of a Nordic sword, but rather that of a hand and a half wheel pommel sword of which was common in the 14th century in North Britain. It was after this discovery that the rock would be named the Westford Knight, named after the town of Westford, Massachusetts, where the carvings resided. <laughs> 